What's up, everybody, and welcome to a special edition of the Falcons Final Whistle Podcast. We are here at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in the Delta Sky Club recording this podcast live. I'm Scott Baer. With me is my tag team partner, Tori McElhaney, and also here, a very special guest, cornerback A.J. Terrell. Sir. A.J. Terrell is here, everybody. Woohoo! Now, A.J., yeah! Now, a couple quick things about the format, right? So we're going to have... 12 minutes or so with our main man here. And then after that, we're going to open it up for questions from you guys to ask me and to ask Tori. So get those questions ready. We are going to have that mic circulating around. This is going to be a really great time to get to know AJ and get to know this Falcons team better. So with all that, AJ, first question to you. You see all these people jacked up to see a guy from their hometown playing for the Atlanta Falcons. What's it like to interact with these people? Appreciate it. Uh, it's just, it's different, you know what I mean? Just a bigger platform and uh, just got a lot to, you know, give and just out there playing on the field just gave me a lot of motivation. AJ, it's funny. Uh, you have been at the Braves. You th- right. threw out the first pitch. Then you were at Atlanta United. You were the golden spike hitter. I'm pretty right. sure that's the name of what you were. Yeah. Right. Of, of those two, what's the more difficult? I thought the pitch was going to be sweet, but it wasn't sweet. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had ended up spiking that one in the ground. The, the, uh, the spike was easy, though. Yeah. You know, but they were both great experiences and uh, just something that I definitely loved doing. So it was just giving back in my way. Yeah. How much did it mean to kind of see other Atlanta fan bases kind of take to you the way that they do? It means a lot. That means, you know, I'm, it's just growing, you know, year after year, just out there, just off my play and uh, just the presence of me being on the field and playing with my teammates and uh, just get everybody, you know, tight knit and uh, just the fan base and everybody. I just appreciate everybody just locking in with us and riding along this, this, this path that we're going on and uh, just try to get to the playoffs, get some Ws. You grew up playing youth football right down the road, basically, at uh, Ben Hill Park, right? right? You were there for the Oom Squad, if I got that right. (laughs) For the Oom Squad, what's it like playing professional football so close to where you grew up and how important this area is to you? So so surreal, Um, just being able to, like right now, just being down the street from Campbellton Road, right where uh, Ben Hill is. And uh, just being on the big stage right now, just putting on for the city is just, like, amazing. Like, it's so surreal. Now, Scott, I know, wanted to ask about your brother. Right. Is, is it nice to see him? I mean, you, you get to see him kind of go through what you went through not too long ago. You're, right. you're not that old, man. Like, right. how does it feel seeing him kind of go through that, what you did? Uh, just, it's, it's no surprise, you know, just all the work we done put in, him just watching me as I, you know, went through all my phases and him now being himself and uh, just locking in with football and becoming the player he is, is, is making me proud, you know, just setting the, setting the way and paving his way, you know, to college is definitely amazing. And, and you're kind of paving your way into this league. And in year one, you had a really good year. Year right. two, it seemed like, I mean, second team all pro, right? Second team all pro, that says a lot. How are you able to make that jump in year two to be one of the NFL's elite uh, defensive backs? Just locking in, you know, taking care of my body, uh, just being the head of everybody um, in the film room and uh, just trusting my ability, just going out there and just playing calm free and uh, just having fun with the game. I think recently you were named one of the league's most underappreciated players and the word that possible. I know, right? And then underrated is a word that I think has come up a few times. Do you like that moniker? Do you like kind of having that moniker? Or is it kind of a, a sign of like, you know what, like underappreciated, undervalued? Like, how do you feel hearing that? Controlling me. Like, yeah. I ain't really worried about what they talk about. You know, I know where I stand. So really just, um, like I said, just going attacking every day in the, weight, um, in the weight room, film room, just with the team and uh, just doing my job and everybody else do their job and, you know, everybody get their shine. So. That's, that's how I feel about it. And there are a lot of new faces on this defense, including uh, Casey Hayward, who said a lot of nice things about you. What's it going to be like playing opposite him, having that veteran, a guy who's done it, a guy that can still really do it at a very high level? Like you said, just experience. You know, Casey definitely a 
he all um all pro himself and uh he he got so much experience under his belt and uh just me being a, on the opposite side of him is like a blessing um just having an older brother and uh just getting some knowledge from it you know week in week out and in practice and all that so just having him as an outlet is is something I appreciate I think it's funny because I'm pretty sure on the last like five podcasts, whenever we talk about what we're excited to see in 2022, I have said you're pairing with Casey Hayward every single time. Now that you've gotten to know him a little bit, I know it's only been a short amount of time, but what do you like about, I know you just said experience, but what do you like about who he is as a guy, as a player? No, nah, you know, we got the same agent, so I know him outside of, outside of football, so we already had a relationship, but uh, just... Just the, the bond we have, being able to relate. You know, you've got somebody that you talk to. You, you know, some people don't, can't relate with what you done been in. But like I said, he got so much experience. Anything I ask that he could tap in with me and understand what I'm saying. You're, you're just starting to get to know th this 2022 Falcon squad. What can these fans expect from this group? Try, hey, we're going to get some W's this year. Um, we we got to go to the playoffs, and uh, that's that's the main thing, just just thinking the big picture. Um, got to gotta take it one game at a time, you know, just going in, uh, going in practice the way we prepare, uh, everybody just being on the same page and uh, just going out there and winning that one game each week is the main thing. Okay, this is the fun part of the podcast. We're going to mm -hmm. have a little bit fun, even Here though we we've, already, we've already been having fun. I mean – it, but this is going to be a little bit different. We're going to do a lightning round. I'm going to have, like, a few questions for you, and All you're right. going to go – we're going to go real quick, and you're going to answer these questions. Some are funny, some are not. So, you ready? Let's go. You ready? Okay. <laughs> Fave artist or song that you're playing right now? <clears throat> Little Baby. There we go. Memorable play as a Falcon, your most memorable play as a Falcon. There are a few to choose from. There are a few. Uh, my first pick here last year against the Patriots. There you go. Your biggest pet peeve? Mm, I got a lot of those. <laughs> uh, I'll say. See, I have a problem with, like, slow drivers. Yeah, it, the, the main one is smacking. There you go. <laughs> I hate when somebody eat next to me and they smack it like. Okay, note to self. Yeah. You see him out at a restaurant, mm -hmm. chew with your mouth. Close your mouth, for sure. Close your mouth. I'm going to call you out. <laughs> your fave uh, fashion trend. Fashion? Mm-hmm. You got some game day fits. I've seen those going right, on. Right, it's a lot. You, I don't think you that, – that one I'm going to have to just keep. You're going to keep? Yeah, okay. We'll, we'll save it for during the season. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll tap back in with that one. All right, if you're choosing text, call, or FaceTime. Text. <laughs> no calls. <laughs> text. The fam is like, oh, it's text if we all ain't the way. Tight, if we ain't tight, just text me like that. <laughs> I'm not going to answer no phone call or FaceTime. <laughs> Your la okay, the last movie you watched. Life. Mm. Good one. Y'all know what life is? Is that the one with Eddie Murphy? Yes. Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The movie's awesome. Good one. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, The teammate that you spend the most time with. Teammate? Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like me being here, I got so much range where I can, like, just go have fun. Yeah. Um, I, I, I tap in with all my teammates when I step out, but um, the easy way I can say is Casey. Casey. Okay. Sure. I like it. I like it. Um, your favorite Atlanta restaurant? <sighs> Come on. It's too many. Too many. <laughs> Waffle House. Hey, the, the, hey the, honestly. The, the, the quick one is always going to be American Deli. Okay. All right. I can get behind that. No. <laughs> there you go. Um, now, I have seen on Instagram your son has some serious style. I honestly, I'm going to say this. I think he may have better style than you. I'm just saying. It's close. It's really close. I'll try. What's your favorite <laughs> outfit of his? Uh... I like his I shoes, I, man. Yeah, I ain't really post a lot of pictures of him on there, but the one I like the most is him and his essential fear of God fit. Okay. With the SBs on. Yeah. I like that one. Nice. Okay, Sit last one, and honestly, we'll get you out of here, but right. one word to describe 2022 for you. Uh, it's a marathon, you know, just keep mm. going. Um, like I said, we got so much going uh, this year, a lot, a lot of new faces. I feel like it's, it's a marathon where we're trying to go, like I said, one game at a time. And uh, if anybody don't know the marathon, definitely from Nipsey Hustle. So I like that word, and it's, just, it's always just going to be a marathon. Awesome. Love it.
I think that's pretty much it we got. That's awesome. AJ yeah. Terrell, so, thank you so much. The AJ, crowd, thank, thank you, so you guys much. so yes. much. Absolutely. It's better than we ever could have hoped for. AJ, thank you so much, man. Right. Appreciate the yeah. time. Now we're going to enter into phase two of this podcast. There's going to be a microphone circulating around. If you guys have any questions about AJ, about the 2022 Falcons, we're going to stick around for 10, 15 minutes, something like that. Ask her any, anything, that you, anything that's on your mind, we can definitely talk about. And Tori. There's yes. the, uh, so anybody who, who wants to ask a uh, question, raise your hand. We can get you a microphone and we can get this thing going. But Tori, as we head through this OTAs, right, we're about halfway through it. We're just getting to know a lot of these new players. What are your impressions of this team kind of as you're getting to know a new quarterback, a new cornerback, so many new faces molding, uh, molding together with so many uh, young players? Well, I think that's it exactly is it's new. I feel like right now we are in a new era of Falcons football. And I think yeah. I've said that it's like, Guys like AJ, guys like Kyle Pitts, these are the new faces of this organization. But it, it's not what it once was. And, and we're still trying to figure out what exactly this team is and how they're going to operate. And not just in 2022, but beyond into 23, 24, 25. I mean, we're looking at, AJ was talking about the marathon that right. this is. And I thought that was the perfect word to describe where this Falcons organization is and where it's wanting to go. This is not a sprint. This right. is a marathon. And it's a marathon over this season where they're going to try to win as many games as they possibly can. It's a marathon over several seasons as they get right with the cap. They continue to build up this roster around guys like AJ, guys like Kyle. There's going to be a new leadership core here, guys that are engaged with these fans, signing autographs. How cool is this? Yeah, love it. AJ could have just bounced. He didn't. He's sticking around. He's signing autographs he's mingling with people from neighborhoods where he grew up I love that I yeah, mean that's it's so great that's what's so cool too is there are a few guys from not just the Atlanta area but the state of Georgia at large who are a part of this team and I think that is something really special that not every NFL team has and to be able to be a part of the culture of Atlanta I think is very very important I know you're a, you're a West Coast guy. I I, I'm a Georgia girl. Like, I've been here. I've seen this organization throughout the years. And it does feel different. It feels newer. It feels fresher. And, and it, it does feel like this is the, the foundation of what Terry Fontenot, Arthur Smith, what they actually want to build here. And that's why I think events like this are so key because fans can come out and interact and meet all these new personalities and these young players because for so long – it was Matt Ryan. It was Julio Jones, right? Yeah, it, yeah. It, it was Tony uh, Gonzalez, Gonzalez, if you yeah. want to go way back. And when you have these new people, you want to get out and meet them. You want to see that they're real folks who like American Deli. That yeah. was a good choice, by I the way. I loved it, yeah. Yeah, and, and I think that those things are important. Now, now that they're kind of building this culture, right? I was actually going to ask him this, but so much of that chip on your shoulder conversation yeah. is going on, right? I can feel that. Yes. And one thing that I like that, that Grady Jarrett said is he said, it's not just with the players. Arthur Smith wants to prove himself as a good head coach. Mm -hmm. Terry Fontenot wants to prove he's a good GM. These guys are new to their jobs and their job titles. So it's a big prove it thing the entire way. And I think how these guys do they all want to prove people wrong. Yeah. So when they see Vegas say, okay, four and a half wins, right? Or they see Vegas say five and a half. They want to be above that. And I think that that's the right attitude to have as we move forward here. Now, there's a lot of talk about AJ. Obviously, AJ was just sitting here. You're going to write something for the website about, about what Arthur Smith said about Kyle Pitts yeah. entering his second year. I thought it was a very interesting way to, to a look at it because – Look, the guy had a 1,000-yard season, Yeah, but the expectations are higher? Yeah, the fact that Arthur Smith has said on so many occasions, Kyle Pitts is only scratching the surface of who he is as a player in this league. That is, to say that after you have the rookie season that you do as a rookie tight end in this league, I mean, that's, that's hard to do. But what you're doing is you are having an opportunity to see what more he can be in this league. And that's exactly what Arthur Smith was talking about as they were getting ready to go out and practice today. Yeah, and I think it's, it kind of lets your um, imagination wander because if you think he had the second best tight end 
second best season by a rookie tight end in history. Right. And we're talking about scratching the surface. Right. And I think that we're going to see him move around the formation more. And we're going to see him more actively involved because we don't know what we're going to get from Drake London yet. He's big. He has a huge catch radius. He did great things at USC, which as a UCLA Bruin pains me to say. <laughs> but nonetheless, I really think that it'll be interesting to see Kyle Pitts is the number one pass catcher. It doesn't right. matter what he plays. And I think to see what he can do next is going to be one of the most fascinating things that we, that we deal with. Um, before we get to anything else, forgot to thank Microsoft Windows oh, 11. Yeah, that's a big important. thank you to them, the official operating sponsor of the NFL and the Atlanta Falcons. The all-new Windows 11 is here to bring you closer to what you love like A.J. Terrell being a feature guest on this Falcons Final Whistle podcast. Honestly, love it. Awesome. And we do have a question. That is so great. Thank you so much. We might have a couple. Let's do it. Listen, my question is this. Given that most of our receivers, if Julio was still here, he would probably be like one of the smallest receivers on the team, right? <laughs> just this being, just talking for real. That's true. But having said that, the question I have is, Usually when you deal with a team like Tampa Bay, you have one Mike Evans you have to deal with. You can kind of change a corner, switch a corner, do all that. But dealing with us this year, no matter where you go, one through three, it's going to be 6'4", six, 6'3", six, large catch radius, yak. And then you can have a chance, an opportunity to put Cordero Patterson at like 6'2 and a half in the back. And I'm just kind of feeling like, how do you, what do you see our offense actually doing this year just with that setup? You know what I mean? Regardless of who the quarterback is. And one last thing. Ritter, his tight end in college, was like 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, and it kind of like a match here. So <laughs> what you think, your brother? Well, before we get to that, maybe we need like a, a guest analyst maybe next week. Know, that right? was a pretty good yeah. breakdown. I, I'm, I'm trying to think of ways that I could do it better. But yeah. I think the reason why I like this group of Drake London, Brian Edwards, Auden yeah. Tate, that's a basketball team, right? Kyle Pitts, maybe the tallest one in, in yeah. the group. Yep. I like the athleticism that goes with it. These aren't big guys who can plod downfield and just out jump you, right? That These are guys who are athletic, who can go get the ball. And I, I think it's going to be fascinating. Tori, how do you, I mean, it should be fun to see how they're going to mix Patterson into all this. That's the thing is I, I was so glad you brought that up because I'm like, I honestly don't say receivers anymore when I'm talking about, yeah, you can't do that. I, I say Cordero Patterson and Kyle Pitts and Drake Lennon and Auden Tate and Brian Edwards. These are these aren't wide receivers. These are receiving weapons. These yeah, aren't – Cordero true. Patterson isn't a running back. He's a weapon. Kyle Pitts isn't a tight end. He's a weapon. That, to me, makes – if you're looking at this – honestly, this group, when you're looking at it and you're Arthur Smith and you're, being, you're able to scheme for these guys, you want to have – you want to confuse the heck out of defenses. And I think that's exactly what they're going to be able to provide – in this offense that I think a lot of times, exactly like what you're saying in your question, a lot of times you have one big guy. Now they have a lot of versatility. It is something that Arthur Smith has valued since he got here in Atlanta. So, so. where do you bring help? And I, I think when you have two quarterbacks that are new to the system, uh, it's going to help them because at some point they're moving, they're outside the pocket, they're in trouble, throw it up, see what happens. <laughs> The old 50-50 ball. Well, the 50-50 ball, Drake London's probably going to come down with that, right? And Kyle Pitts, we've, we, we saw in Miami and in Buffalo mm -hmm. and in Tampa, right, so many examples of that type of thing happening. So I think that it's going to be a fun group to watch. Here's the other crazy thing, Tori. If you go back even a couple months pre-draft, this wide receiver core was like capital all caps, major need, right? <laughs> it was Kyle Pitts and not a whole lot. It was, well, I think the only one, because at the time, Alameda Zacchaeus hadn't yet signed his tender. Yeah. So it was like the only person that had even caught a pass in at that re wide receiver core was Frank Darby, right. who was a rookie last year. I, and then they go out and they rebuild this whole, not just room, but like what I was saying, the weapons around it. You re-sign Cordero. You, you have Kyle Pitts coming back. You get some other tight ends, too. I, I think that's important as well. So there was a lot that had to be done this offseason across the offense. All right. It sounds like we have another question from the crowd. Thank, how, do you, how do you think Drake Leno will fit in our offensive scheme? Uh, I think he's tailor-made for it. Yeah. I think that the, the really cool thing was that the Falcons took the first wide receiver available. So they had the pick of the litter, and he chose 
their scheme fit, which is a big guy who can move around down, who can move downfield, a guy with a huge catch radius. I don't like comparing rookies to guys who are established, but I think A.J. Brown types like a big physical dude who's going to run you He's going to run around you and, and then, then over, over you, you. <laughs> right? So I think it's pretty exciting. I, keep, I can't wait till training camp because we're going to see these guys with pads on yeah. so we know how physical they can be at the line. That's, a, that's another Drake London asset. And I, I think being able to see him work downfield to be physical and go at full speed. All these OTA practices, about three-quarter speed maybe, but to really see him get into it. I think is going to be pretty exciting. For yeah, sure. we got another question over here. What's, what do we got, man? You know, Frank Darby, yeah. do you think that he's going to make a leap this year? I think he has to. I think it's going to, for Frank Darby, I, I'm just excited to see his role expand. And I do think that he has an opportunity this year that maybe he didn't have last year. I think when you're looking at a, at a wide receiver pick, sometimes it takes them a minute, especially when you had – you ha at the time, you had Calvin Ridley, you had Russell Gage, you had Kyle Pitts. It was a very different looking group. So I think that the door is open for a guy like Frank Darby to, one, continue doing what he did on special teams. I think that's just as important. And then also kind of making a name for himself in this offense as well. I'm looking forward to seeing Frank Darby more, not just for the social media content, cause context, because we, know, we yeah. know he's hilarious. We love being around him. So I'm excited just as much for what he's going to do in his second year as I am, just to see him on social media more. <laughs> I mean, he, it feels like he's always had, a, like, a third Red Bull of, like, for the morning. Like, he's that's just, just so how much he is. Yeah, honestly, his, like, normal, I don't even know, level is honestly ten times what I think the normal person is. I've never seen him not, like, jazzed up and running around. Yeah, 100%. As we're kind of wrapping this thing up here, I just have to remind you guys one more time, please rate review subscribe on itunes, iTunes on spotify, spotify. also sub subscribe to our uh, atlanta falcons youtube channel yeah. where all these things go uh, we have lots of great videos there check all that stuff out and really this is i'll be honest this is our first time doing a live podcast yeah we've never we got done aj live. freaking terrell yeah that was awesome yeah guys thank everyone who stopped by here at the delta sky at the delta sky club on Friday at the open practice. And thanks to everyone on Monday and Tuesday down the road who's listening to this podcast. Greatly appreciate all of the support, all the nice things that have been said about Tori and occasionally about me. <laughs> uh, but we definitely um, appreciate it. It's been so much fun. And we'll talk to you guys again next week.